Hi, I'm Aaron of Living Science Videos. As you grow and develop into an adult, your DNA is quietly copying and passing on the directions to make the amino acids, which in turn make up the proteins that make up you. Proteins are the building blocks of your body's tissues, like your muscle fibers, actin and myosin, among others. There are some 20 amino acids that make up the proteins that determine your human traits. Think of them like the 26 letters of the alphabet. These 26 letters form many different words. Likewise, the 20 amino acids combine in different configurations to make up many different proteins. This process of building the building blocks is called protein synthesis. Synthesis means assembly, to put something together or manufacture out of component parts. This is a two-step process beginning in the nucleus, in your chromosomes, on sections of DNA called genes. Genes contain the recipe of different nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, that make living organisms like humans into unique individuals, but still basically the same as everyone else. It's kind of like spaghetti. There's one basic recipe for spaghetti that everyone knows. We can all tell spaghetti apart from any other dish, but at the same time, everyone makes their spaghetti a little different. So how do your cells assemble the amino acids into proteins like collagen and the cartilage that go on to form the size and shape of your nose, for example? Also, your ears have collagen proteins. More if you have big ears. <laughs> the better to hear you with, right? Um, actually, in humans, bigger ears don't really hear any better than smaller ears, so the wolf may have been pulling Red Riding Hood's leg. <laughs> Can't trust anyone. Your DNA contains a genetic code or recipe for your proteins, but your DNA doesn't leave the nucleus. So a copy of those instructions need to be made inside the nucleus before they can be taken outside for assembly. If you remember DNA replication from our meiosis and mitosis videos, making a copy or transcribing a copy of the genetic code is similar but different. Unlike replication, your DNA is not duplicating into another DNA. In the process called transcription, double-stranded DNA is copied into a single strand of RNA, or ribonucleic acid. The names of both RNA and DNA point to another key difference between them, and that is that they use different sugars, ribose and deoxyribose. And the only difference between those sugars is that deoxyribose is missing one oxygen atom that ribose has. Transcription means to copy something down. In this case, an enzyme called RNA polymerase unzips the double strand of DNA to copy a sequence of nitrogenous bases onto a single strand of RNA. It doesn't copy the whole DNA strand, only the regions of it called genes that code for an RNA molecule. The DNA polymerase attaches to a region called a promoter and detaches at a terminator region. Binding at the promoter prompts the DNA strand to unzip. Then the polymerase starts typing out a sequence of RNA. Note that guanine always binds with cytosine and adenine with thymine, except that RNA uses uracil instead of thymine. So adenine binds with uracil in RNA and with thymine in DNA. But when it's translated later on, the copy still ends up being the same configuration of amino acids. Once the polymerase reaches the terminator region, it breaks off, and now we have a new strand of RNA. There are non-coding sections in the RNA too, and these are removed by a protein complex called a spliceosome. And now that transcription is done, we have our messenger to take the instructions outside of the nucleus to the surrounding cytoplasm. In fact, the new strand is called messenger RNA. It basically delivers the instructions from your DNA in your cell's nucleus to your ribosomes in the cell's cytoplasm so they can start cranking out proteins. This part of protein synthesis is called translation because we think of the ribosome as effectively reading the instructions to build an appropriate peptide chain accordingly. That's the simplest way to explain it, but actually what happens is that all the different types of amino acids are floating around in the cytoplasm already, having been absorbed from the food that we eat. Each one is connected to a transfer RNA molecule, which also has nitrogenous bases, just like the strands of RNA. Three nitrogenous bases together are called a codon. The ribosome binds to a start codon and breaks away at one of three stop codons. Every transfer RNA molecule for a particular amino acid also has its own unique three-letter anticodon associated with it. In this case, for example, the transfer RNA codon is uracil, cytosine, and adenine. This means that this one will only attach to the messenger RNA where the next available codon is adenine, guanine, and uracil, in that order. If the codon is different, it will take a different anticodon to match it. When they do pair up, the transfer RNA molecule binds to the messenger RNA long enough that the ribosome can detach its amino acid and link it to a peptide chain, which may eventually build into a polypeptide.
So the ribosome moves on down the strand, pairing each codon to the messenger RNA with a matching anticodon from the transfer RNA molecules floating around it. A lot of this depends on what shape everything takes. Just as physical and chemical properties only allow certain configurations to bond one particular way, each peptide chain tends to fold in its own unique way as well, and just like the enzymes do also. This protein folding completes the process, and that, my friends, is probably the simplest summary on how the elephant and you both got your ears. Mm -hmm.